We have some pivotal matchups in the ACC this week. Can Louisville make the conference proud? Can Miami keep rolling? Can Florida State start a winning streak? You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to the everydayers and thank you so much for making Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your, place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. He's Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. I'm Alex Dono from Locked On Canes on this loaded Locked On ACC We will talk about the NIL chaos at UNLV, and there is an ACC tie-in to this story, a direct tie-in, not to mention this can technically happen at programs all over the country if we're not careful. (laughs) We're going to talk about why Desmond Howard is not jumping on the Clemson bandwagon, at least not yet. But uh, I want to talk about some of the matchups in the conference. And like Kenton, can we agree that uh, 15th rank Louisville at 16th rank Notre Dame. Like that, that's the matchup where we're going to learn the most about the ACC this week, especially if Louisville's a true contender because they haven't been on the road yet this year. This is their first road trip. Yeah. So not only is this their first road trip, but I mean, with all due respect, who has Louisville played that would be up there in that caliber, caliber of a Notre Dame? And even right. if you wanted to make the argument, well, Notre Dame lost to, NIU, who then went on to lose to Buffalo the week following, even if you were to make that argument as if transitive property somehow works out in college football, which, spoiler alert, it absolutely doesn't, um, you would still be making an argument that a Notre Dame team that we're seeing that has been historically at least an eight-win team or so uh, since, you know, since, hmm, since, what is their head coach's name? Since uh, I it's it's eluding me right now. Freeman, Marcus Freeman. Oh, free, uh, since sorry, Marcus sorry, I didn't, I didn't know over. which team you were talking about. No, no, you're good, you're good. Since Marcus Freeman has took over, beating that team, if you're going to say, hey, you know, that win meant nothing or that win basically just meant how bad Notre Dame is, that's fine. But at some point in time, you got to give Louisville their credit. Similar to another team we're going to talk about later here, at some point in time, Even if you say all the opponents are bad, well, hell, maybe they are just looking good against those opponents. Maybe they make those opponents look bad. So, you know, I think that that game will absolutely tell us a lot about Louisville if they're for real and all that type of stuff. Yeah, and Louisville's got a great rushing defense. Notre Dame has a great rushing attack. Uh, Louisville is being affected now by the injury bug. Their wide receiver, Jaden Thompson, suffered a knee injury. He's out for the rest of the year. So there are some question marks. Uh, the Fighting Irish are favored, I believe, by six and a half in this one. Let me double check that number. Yeah, it's Notre Dame minus six and a half at home. So that, that, that's going to be an important one. Uh, you know, another one, I, we haven't talked about this one enough yet this week, Kenton. You know, the Florida State Seminoles, their their offense is still bad. That didn't change, but they did pick up a win at home against Cal. Uh, right. And their defensive line is starting to pick it up. Uh, they're on the road at SMU this week. And I know SMU a couple weeks ago didn't look good against BYU. They bounced back against TCU and got a big win, put up 66 points this past week. And the SMU uh, Mustangs are six and a half point favorites against Florida State. If I told you a month ago that SMU would be favored by basically a touchdown against FSU, you would have called me crazy. But here we are. And if you would have told me that Preston Stone would be sitting on the bench for them to be favored, Jennings, yeah. I would have not only told you you're crazy, I would have said you need to leave that dope alone, Dono. You got a good yeah. family at home. You come from a good family. You leave that stuff alone, okay? You better love all your family enough. But here we are. Here we are with Florida State seemingly having to say that their offense is anemic is an understatement. To say that their offense is stagnant is an affront to the word stagnant. To say that their offense is abysmal or is offensive is a a joke that's been said a million times, but it can be made a million and run because it's right. So you're looking at this situation and you're saying SMU's Achilles heel has been, how can the offensive line protect? 
that has been, oh man, well, is it is it just that Preston is holding on to the ball too long? Is it that Jennings has a little bit more of ability to move around in the park? What's going on? I'll tell you what, their offensive line looks better with Jennings, but how much better? How much better? Because you got some dogs coming your way down there to Dallas. But you know what else is crazy? You bring up how, you know, Preston Stone a couple weeks ago got benched for Kevin Jennings. Uh, isn't it kind of crazy that Preston Stone got benched before DJ Uyunglele with the way that he's played this season? And it goes to show you that it, at least SMU had an actual viable second option at quarterback where Florida Yeesh. State's second option is Brock Glenn. You know, I, I'm going to say something, and I don't – maybe Florida State fans are going to jump me for this. Maybe not. I, well, I don't know if Florida State fans still watch our show. I think that they tuned out a long time ago. I, yeah, yeah. They, uh, you know, no, nah, we're not even going to talk about the fact that some things in realignment didn't go their way, and, and all now all of a sudden the season ain't going their way either. But what I will say is, how bad can Brock Glenn be? Like, how rough is he that Norvell is like, hey, we we got to stick beside him. We got to do it. The best coaches do not stick beside players. They stick beside winners. They don't stick beside, hey, this is my guy and I'm riding him and regardless of what happens, I ain't pulling them. They stick beside who is producing, who is doing things the right way, who is putting us in positions to win. And if you don't have anybody on the roster that can put you in a better position to win than DJU right now, that is coaching malpractice. Because that young man, I could not have imagined it would look this bad. I, just, I couldn't. I couldn't have. And, and yet, here we are with Florida State struggling to complete drives in the most basic of ways. I'm not saying complete drives as in punch it into the end zone. You're in the red zone. Take care of the right. ball. You've got some of the best special teams in the nation. Just take care of the ball. Get yourself a field goal. Nah, I see a guy in a white jersey down there. But, DJ, we're wearing garden today. Oops. It's already gone. You know, it's it's just it's just very wild to me. So you know, elsewhere, um, Miami is going to be hosting Virginia Tech. That's a Friday night game, so that's going to kind of kick off our our ACC weekend. Uh, Hurricanes are eighteen, sorry, nineteen and a half point favorites now. That that line, it's every bumped. time I look, that line it's keeps bumped. moving. So yeah. and and it goes back, Kenton. We've had this conversation a lot throughout the year. When you see who the Sharps are putting their money on, because those are the ones who move the lines. This line right. has moved two, two and a half points since it opened. Um, there seems to be some confidence, you know, out in Las Vegas that Miami's going to win this one and win big. And it's it's understandable. Uh, you know, you could you could argue Miami, you know, hasn't been tested because Virginia Tech should be the most talented team Miami's faced so far, but Virginia Tech is not playing to their talent level so far, Kenton. Whereas, you know, Miami, Miami, they you can only beat the teams that are in front of you. Cam Ward Absolutely. has been balling. Heisman Trophy favorite. Miami's put up uh, 41 points, was their lowest output so far this season. So they give you every reason to believe they're going to take care of business, whereas Virginia Tech, usually their offense doesn't even wake up until the fourth quarter. I think that's something worth noting here, Kenton, that uh, even in you know the, the Vanderbilt game, it ended up going to overtime where Virginia Tech was down for most of that game. Kyron Drones and company didn't wake up till the fourth quarter. And it was the same thing in the Rutgers game, made it look a lot closer than it was throughout that contest. So Virginia Tech is going to need to start fast to have any chance against Miami. My question is, how do they keep getting off to these slow starts? Because you're not that good. You're objectively not that good of a football team to keep saying, oh, we'll go ahead and wake up eventually. We'll just Stop it. Stop! It cannot. This is not sustainable. You do not have that level of talent. I mean, and you know what's crazy about what you're saying right now? You talked about two games, but I believe that in all four, they have scored more points in the second half than they did in the first half. Obviously, in the um, in the Vanderbilt game, 24 points to three. They outscored first half to second half. In the Marshall game, 21 to 10. They outscored themselves second half to first half. In the Old Dominion game, they outscored themselves 23 to 14 second half to uh, first half. And in the Rutgers game, of course they outscored themselves because they only scored one time 
in the entire first half, 16 to 7. So objectively speaking, what the hell does Pry have to do? Apparently, he needs to pry out some monster energy or something to get these guys going in the first quarter. Do what yeah. you're doing in the second half all game. Figure it the hell yeah. out. Yeah, we, we, we shall see. Uh, I'm interested to see what uh, what Virginia Tech's defense, how they approach Cam Ward, because te- teams are, are doing – all four teams Miami has faced so far – have made this decision that we're going to load the box to try to shut down Miami's running game, despite the fact that Cam Ward is their quarterback and they have one of the most productive receiving cores in the country. I wonder if Virginia Tech will do that because they definitely they don't want to be gashed on the ground, Kent, and they're, they're 28th yeah. in the country against the pass, so they'd probably trust their corners a little bit more. They're 101st in the country against the run, so they may decide to load up the box. It'll be interesting to see what... Xavier Restrepo and Isaiah Horton, who's really stepped up in Miami's receiving core, can do against that secondary. Now, I will say for Virginia Tech, the pass rush is going to be super interesting uh, because uh, Antoine uh, Antoine Powell Ryland is off to a really good start. He uh, he had I think nine and a half sacks last year. He's already got five and a half sacks this year, which is a lot for four games played. So you know we'll, we'll see if he can put Ward on the turf this week. Absolutely, and one thing that I want to note here. For all the times that we were wrong and people have told us about it and people have given us our lashings for it, if only there was a podcast that told you the run defense would be the Achilles heel of this Virginia Tech team. If only only there was somebody who screamed it from the mountaintops, hey, this thing could be a big issue. This could be a potential undoer of the season. Lord forbid, we just wouldn't know that they wouldn't know how to score a point until the second half anyway. But I am very intrigued by this. You have what should be some of the more interesting matchups on the outside that we've seen all season. Because let's not let's not make any bones about this. Is Dorian Strong not still one of the best DBs in, in yeah. the conference? And so you're either going to have him on Jacoby George or Xavier Restrepo And then you're saying if we load the box up and we trust our DBs on the outside, Virginia Tech has always had underrated secondaries for whatever reason. Can they make it hard on Cam Ward? Can they make it a situation where it's like, hey, Cam, you're going to have to beat us and these guys are going to have to get open. Let's see about it. Let's see what happens here. Well, uh, when we come back, there's one team we haven't talked about who's got a really interesting game. Uh, The Clemson Tigers. They are huge favorites, and I understand why uh, based on what they've done the past couple weeks, but they're 21.5-point favorites against you know a Cinderella Stanford team that just pulled off a, an unexpected victory. Can Stanford even hang with Clemson? And that there's one, there's a national pundit out there who still needs to see more before he hops on that Clemson bandwagon. My friends, we're nowhere near done yet. We're only getting started on this brand new episode of Locked on ACC. Keep it locked. Guys, I am so excited uh, to debut this segment here through our friends at Roy, one of the newest sponsors here on the Locked on Network. It's time to highlight our Roy Player of the Week. Roy is a new platform that lets fans make contributions directly to their favorite athletes. Download Roy for iOS or Android and enter our referral code locked on and you'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5000 cash no purchase necessary void where prohibited so this week we've selected my guy Cam Ward as our Roy player of the week puts up 404 passing yards three touchdowns he's got over 1400 passing yards on the season 14 touchdowns leads the country right now we're giving Cam Ward $100 on Roy. If you were impressed as we were with his performance this past Saturday, you can show Cam Ward some love too. Just hop on Roy, throw in a few bucks. If everyone pitches in just $10, it adds up fast for Ward. And now you have the chance to show your appreciation for Ward's standout performance this week, as well as what he'll continue to bring uh, to the University of Miami. And we'll highlight an ACC player every single week for this. So you guys want to check this out. Get off the sidelines and into the NIL game with Roy. My friends, we are also proudly brought to you by the great folks 
at LinkedIn jobs. Guys, I have found jobs through LinkedIn, so I know that this works. And when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. It helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on ACC your first listen and your first watch today. For your next listen, make sure you check out Kenton and Grayson on Locked on Wolfpack. They do an awesome job covering NC State. Check me out on Locked on Canes. Cover the Miami Hurricanes each and every day. Uh, so, yeah, later on on this episode, we will talk about the the NIL dilemma <laughs> that's going on in UL, UNLV, which is a real pity because UNLV is – at least they were a G5 college football playoff contender. You could probably throw that out the window now with the way that things are going there. Uh, but another one, Kenton, inside the ACC, um, you've got, you know, Stanford. I, I don't expect them to pull off another upset this week, but that was mm -hmm. admirable what they did at Syracuse in the dome. Now they step into Death Valley. I think my question will be can they cover a 21 and a half point spread? And are we buying in to Clemson now? Because this obviously this isn't necessarily the game that's going to shout from the mountaintops that Clemson is truly a college football playoff contender. But I'm anxious to see if they can keep blowing teams out after doing it the past two weeks in a row. You know, I am anxious to see if they can continue to blow teams out. But I think a more important thing to say here is there is no way under God's green earth Stanford covers this spread. You are doing two back to back weeks of going from far west coast to the east coast you're not going to middle america you're doing a three and i know people are going to say well ken if the first time they did this the results were positive why are you worried about it the second time i am telling you right now this is not a thing that gets easier with time this is not something that gets easier as you do it more it gets tougher and again the biggest part of this that people are underrating we're talking about a Stanford education. I get it. I know that the ACC does have certain accreditations that a majority of its schools have. I know there are multiple research one institutes in the ACC and all that. They are not Stanford. Okay. You're taking a Stanford course load while going from Palo Alto to New York, back to Palo Alto to Clemson, South Carolina. And of course, what? A span of what? 15 days? Yeah. That's that is a lot. I'm worried about that team. Love me some Alagai Minor. Love me some Davis. That squad just, you know, they, they just got a really rough draw. And and I hate to say it, but it, it feels like their football program is going to be a little bit of a victim of circumstance in terms of all of this travel. And mind you, all of this travel, when you're already, you know. They're already kind of drew the short end of the stick in terms of talent. Now, so I don't know uh, how much we'll learn about Clemson in this game, unless unless they don't play well, that may teach us something. But they they're expected to win and win big. Uh, Desmond Howard from College Game Day and on uh, the College Football Live podcast, Desmond Howard said this about Clemson: "I'm not about to jump on the bandwagon talking about that's right, Clemson's back now." They're ready to take on these top teams. Not so fast, Howard said. He took a line from Lee Corso. He said, when you talk about this team coming together and playing like a championship team, like they had that opportunity against Georgia, he said. They're playing better now because the competition is not as high as it was in week one against Georgia. That's what's going on. Now, I don't think they're as bad as they looked against Georgia, but I definitely don't think they're as great as they looked against App State and North Carolina State. They're somewhere in the middle, he said. So, And, and this is, Kenton, I wanted to bring this up because this is very similar uh, to what you said earlier this week about Clemson, that we're, we, we can't be, you know, can't be hopping on that bandwagon just yet because when they had an opportunity to take on a top team, they didn't look anywhere near a top team. 
What do I always say about Penn State, Dono? A 300 seat looks like a phantom until a phantom actually pulls up to the party. Okay. <laughs> now, with all due respect, I'm not, I don't think that Stanford is a phantom or a 300 C. I don't think that NC State no. is a Stanford or a 300 C. I don't think that App State is that either. Again, you look like it until that real big body pulls up. Until that door that the, the, the car where the doors open the wrong way, it looks like until that one pulls up. You know, <laughs> Donald's down there in Miami. He's seen a few of them in this time. Even if they were rented, I'm sure he's seen a lot of folks get out of those cars. That's so sure. it's it's a difference. It's a difference. And here's the thing. I would love to be wrong. Anybody who knows me knows I have no gripes against Clemson. Okay? I have absolutely no gripes against the guys. I would love to be wrong. I would love for them to be dominant and to restore that. But they have a chance to show who they are again in a few weeks. They have a chance to show, hey, we are a national contender when Louisville is coming around. That game is going to be one that's circled, especially if Louisville can take care of business up until then. They might mess around and get college game day on that one because you'll have two teams that between them have one loss. So, you know, this is the reality of Clemson made its own bed with this. I don't want to hear any other that everybody's been waiting for us to fall off. Everybody's been waiting for Okay. And if we were waiting, did you did you think that that beat down by the Bulldogs helped? Did you think like, "Oh, I know how to stop all the people. I'm going to hold back the floodgates by getting beat down first. I'm going to get out in front of it and preemptively get beat down before the playoff so that you all can't say anything." That's not how it works, friend. Yeah, no, a amen to that. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how they look against Stanford. Uh, not necessarily a true test, but it is a conference game. And all right, when we come back, there is an absolute disaster at UNLV. And there is an ACC tie-in to this story. Plus, this is an illustration as to why we need a lot more transparency, a lot more organization, and probably more regulation when it comes to name image and likeness you want to keep it locked right here we're not done yet on this brand new episode of locked on acc oh and we're certainly not done yet with fan duel guys we're winning money we're having a blast you got some tasty spreads this week some big spreads we talked about clemson minus 21 and a half on fan duel against uh uh, against Stanford, Miami, minus 19 and a half against Virginia Tech, Florida State, our underdogs, six and a half point dogs at SMU this week. You can check out all of this action on FanDuel Sportsbook. And hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a, a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. Thank you for making Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch today. Alex Dono from Locked On Canes, Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. So when it rains, it pours, Kenton. Uh, on, uh, on Wednesday morning, we find out that UNLV starting quarterback Matt Sluka was going to redshirt. He's only played three games so far this season. He has decided to redshirt, and he's going to be leaving that program over unfulfilled promises, NIL promises, I guess a verbal handshake agreement where he was enticed. Uh, th this, is, th this is very he said, she said, but according to the Sluka side of it, he was promised $100,000 to transfer to UNLV only for them to reveal, well, we don't actually you know, have a hundred to give you, but maybe we can give you three thousand dollars a month, which is not the same thing as a uh, as a hundred grand. And so, and and listen, there are some people who are very anti Sluka. Like, how are you going to opt out and leave your teammates high and dry? The other way to look at it is, if the job that promised you a certain amount of money says, "Oh, we can't actually pay you," how many of us would want to show up to work after that? And that it wasn't just Sluka, the starting quarterback, opting out. Running back Michael Allen who you know used to be at NC State, is also opting out seemingly for the same reasons. Um, 
I don't even know where to start with this story, Kent, and I'll let you take it, whatever, whatever angle you feel most passionate about here. So let me tell you something. Originally, I said, I don't know, Sluka. I don't know what's going on. And, and you know, obviously, if somebody reneges on a promise, it, it's natural to have this reaction. And also, this is a much bigger deal for Sluka than it is for UNLV. UNLV is an institution. They will be okay. They will still get players that want to come to that school regardless of the outcome of however this thing shakes out. Sluka, however, his name is being drugged through the mud for this. So yeah. even if we say, hey, this is an 18- to 22-year-old that made a bad decision, had bad counsel in his corner, and made a bad decision based on that counsel, I would simply say this. Do you think that the counsel in his corner is that bad to tell him, hey, you're going to be the poster child for everything that's wrong with the sport. Right. You're, you're going to be that. And we're going to try to secure you more money on the back end of this. That's already a tough sale for me. That's already, you know, there were allegations that he came to the coaches and asked for more money, which, yeah, hey, again, this is he said, she said. So I'm not saying Sluka's right. I'm not saying that, you know, the university's right. What I will say is this. It's a lot like that episode of King of the Hill where Peggy went to uh, Mexico and they said that she was like some type of drug lord or something like that. Or she started up some type of drug <laughs> ring. And mind you, Peggy was a substitute Spanish teacher who didn't right. know Spanish very well. <laughs> and so her lawyer put her on the stand and asked her very basic questions in Spanish. And the jurors are all cringing like, eh, what is she saying? And her lawyer said, her Spanish, this woman's Spanish is so poor. There's no way she did this. This young man has not been playing to a level that would warrant other schools saying, we got to poach that kid. Yeah, good point. We got to go get him. Don't get me wrong. He hasn't been terrible, God awful. This is unwatchable. But he ain't been that damn good to where anybody would say, well, if you're making 100K there, we'll give you two. We'll give you three. Well, come on. All you got to do is get in with me. But the nail in the coffin for me that made it very clear, there's something in the water at UNLV. It's Michael Allen. I know that Great. family well. I and I don't say that about people I have not spoken to the family, have not spoken to, but I never say that. I Hand to God, Donald, have you ever heard me say I know the family about any other player? No, no, have not. I am telling you, those are honest, upright folks if I've ever met them. If I've ever met some honest, upright people, if his folks are saying something's wrong over there, hey, I am. And and this goes to what you were saying earlier that you and I have both been arguing for. Yes, the players need to get paid. Yes, all that needs to happen. But we also need transparency and clear guardrails because right now people are flying off the interpass because there's no guardrails to say, oh, 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 oh brother, you got to stay within this. You got to stay in this pocket. And now there's an argument of, well, are, is the, are the uh, collectives promising things that the coaches can't uh, do or are the coaches Or, or, or vice guys? versa. Exactly. It, 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 it's, it, it sounds a lot like what allegedly happened with Jaden Rashada at Florida. It, it reminds yes. me. Of, and it's why, like, because the thing, and, and by the way, um, for, from what I gather, and I don't think it's this way everywhere, but it does sound like this happens a lot, these verbal agreements, which are very dangerous for both sides, like to make verbal yeah. NIL agreements. But the reason why these verbal agreements are apparently a somewhat common thing is because the rules, the NCAA rules and also state laws, which sometimes, you know, so, so, sometimes don't even align with the NCAA rules are, are so murky that a lot of these collectives just say, you know what, like we can't put anything in writing because we're not even sure if this could be used against us by the NCAA or about our own states. Like one of the things that UNLV in their statement, you know, they, they claim, you know, and they, they accuse Sluka of, you know, coming to them after the fact to try to renegotiate. That was something they accused him of. And they mentioned like trying to do that, it would violate, you know, we think it would violate NCAA's pay for play, and it might even violate Nevada state law, they claim. So there, there's all this murkiness, and sometimes, you know, the, the rules of the NCAA and the laws of your state may contradict one another. So it's like, this is why, like, we need more transparency and more yeah. organization, because listen, I mean, anyone, 
you know, we're, we're grown men. Like we have, we've worked jobs in our lives. Like yep. you never want to, you know, accept or agree to some form of payment without getting that in writing. And apparently that's yes. happening a lot in NIL. And that's a dangerous thing. And trust me, I learned that lesson later in life than I should have in terms of, hey, you're agreeing to go off of, hey, I trust this guy or I, you know, we're friends or whatever. Nah, yeah. that ain't ha- not right here, partner. When it comes to how I feed myself and my family, when it comes, to- you cannot fill up a gas tank off of loyalty. You cannot fill up, uh, you cannot fill up your belly off of rebel bucks. You cannot fill up. That's not how this thing works. And also, I want to make one last point about the loyalty crowd and loyalty to the team. And you abandoned the team. Loyalty is a two-way street. Without loyalty being a two-way street, that just has one party being used and abused. If me and Donald made an agreement, hey, Donald, uh, I'm going to take more of the cup because I'm doing more of the work. Or, uh, hey, Ken, I'm going to want whatever this is. Or, hey, whatever the case may be, all I need you to do is show up on time, show up ready to record, and I got you. And then one of us reneges and doesn't do our part. If the other party just keeps showing up and say, oh, well, Donna will come around one day. <laughs> oh, he'll show up one time. To go, oh, Kendall, he'll finally start to stop falling asleep during shows and showing up drunk or high and all off his rocker. <laughs> he'll show up straight one day. Well, that just sounds like somebody being a perpetual victim. And I'm sorry, the days of these players being perpetual victims is over. It's done. And I don't care what you think about, oh, it's it's ruining the game I love. If the game you love necessitates the exploitation of these young men to exist, maybe we need to tear it down and start over. Right. Right. And, and also, it, and before before we do that, uh, I would urge any any high school player or parents of high school players, make sure you vet every nil collective any school because they're there some of them have earned great reputations others are apparently a little sus right so you want to make sure talk talk to as many parents of of current players as possible get the full story because until we get the proper regulation and standards right there are there are certain collectives around the country that clearly are, are doing their part uh, and, you know, not uh, not making, you know, selling wolf tickets, as we would say, and not making exactly. false promises. And then apparently there are some that are. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm in lockstep with you on that. A huge shout out and thank you to the everydayers for making Locked on ACC your first listen and your first watch. Make sure you smash that like button if you're watching us on YouTube. Make sure you check out the audio version on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your pods. And we will talk to you. We're going to get the squad together tomorrow, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh Jackson Holzer's going to have to face the music after after what happened against Stanford. <laughs> we'll have that for you. And, and you know, Kent, Kenton, of course, his his team didn't fare any better. Uh, he and Grayson will hey, have to I face knew the music. Blew out. I, I, That's listen, true. I, that, That's true. That music was playing loud and clear in my ear at, during the Tennessee game. I said, oh, every team that wears orange is probably going to blow us out this year. That's fine. <laughs> this is fine. It's okay. Uh, We'll talk to you guys with the squad on another episode of Locked on ACC, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.